I, I do want to check out We Want Plates, but we've actually gotten some some great posts. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going down this a little bit here. Uh just because we we've we've gotten some really spicy ones today, honestly. Like these these have been genuinely the first couple were a little milk toast. These ones are getting to some some interesting territory where I disagree a lot, which is is new to me. So many, so many red flares. What about this one? Uh, am I the asshole for nagging my sister into getting pregnant earlier? That's going to be a weird one. Am I the asshole for telling my ex coworker's employer the reason why she was ostracized at the company? My ex coworker's employer. Okay, let's see. This sounds bad. It sounds like you're the asshole. It's a billion paragraphs long. It has like 15 edits. Oh, man. Okay. 4,500 comments. <laughs> this story actually takes place over multiple years. Oh, you don't say. George R. R. Martin mouthing right now. We'll, we'll try to go fast. Uh, here goes. Also, English isn't my first language, so I apologize for my poor language skills in advance. A little background. I work in corporate HR. My company has a very generous maternity leave policy. It gives you 26 paid weeks off and the option of taking a month or so more if you have extra sick or personal leaves left, or else you can take unpaid leave for the same time. Okay, so there's 26 paid weeks. That's like it's like six months. That's That's pretty good. So part of my responsibilities is to make recommendations for selecting employers or employees for specific projects. So a couple of years ago, there was a huge project that needed a team to be created for. Being part of a project like this would normally establish your career in the industry. You could decide your own career path based on the reputation you get based on a project like this. It would be hectic and difficult, but worth it in the end. Let me guess. I'm just guessing. I'm just guessing. I didn't want to select anybody that might have the audacity to be planning on getting pregnant. And then they had that son of a bitch got pregnant. And I took that personally because it reflected poorly on me for not being Nostradamus. That's just my guess. That's my guess of what's happening. We interviewed prospective people within the company and selected a core team that would take it up. Among this team was M, a recently married female who was generally thought to be a hard worker and quite knowledgeable. Like with everyone else, we interviewed her for the spot and asked her if she wanted to be part of it. However, a month or so in, M announces that she was pregnant and that she would be taking her maternity leave in a month's time. She would be completely unavailable for around seven months and basically leave the team short-staffed for the major part of the project. We had to quick, quickly select a replacement, get them up to speed, and have them take over. It meant more work for everyone, minor delays, etc., etc. This Someone in chat said this is capsaicin-level spicy, and it absolutely is. Because even we're only four paragraphs in here, and I'm like, let me start by saying I can understand in the most generous reading possible that somebody would be like, I, if they were planning on getting pregnant, or maybe they already were pregnant, um, but just weren't announcing it yet, uh, it would have been nice if you had let HR know that so that we could have discriminated against you by not putting you on this project that's going to make your career. However, I also feel like if you don't exercise, and I don't work in the corporate environment, okay? But I feel like if you don't exercise, um, you know, your rights by... It sounds like she was appointed to the project as a, you know, it was a meritocracy. She interviewed for it. She got the project uh, and, and earned it. If you don't go for that, uh, even if you are pregnant, you're just screwing yourself over. It's not like the company is going to be like, oh, thanks for not uh, doing that career advancing move in advance of you trying to establish a family. Now we're going to give you a promotion. If it, you know, in the future, it might end up biting her in the ass if she had been nice about it because if she's going up against other candidates that that played the game a little bit better she would be at a disadvantage moreover just the post existing just makes me mad because i'm like i look not everybody 
most most people will probably agree, I think, but not everybody will agree. But uh, you know, your your life is your life, and your career, you know, it's it's your job. Like this is two very different priorities, and I think they they change weightings in your life for sure. Like when when you're younger, before you you know have a long-term serious relationship or before you're thinking about having kids or something like or maybe you're not thinking about like your health or something like that your career could be your life but you know the idea like that oh what what a bitch for putting her career on the back burner to take advantage of her relatively narrow window to start the family that she wants to have like that's crazy that that someone would would try to hold that against them anyway so so far i think we're that that's where i'm at four paragraphs in Let's keep it moving. Um, what pissed off the top management was that M knew she was pregnant when she joined the team. She never mentioned it during the interview because then we would have not uh, hired her. By not telling anyone in advance, everyone felt that she can't be trusted in the future. She basically became a pariah and no team lead wanted her in any of the critical projects. Wow! Um... <laughs> That's pretty bad. Also, like, yeah, it seems insanely illegal. You're not supposed to admit that part. I think you're you're just supposed to, like, uh, do it, but not tell anybody. Like, don't send any emails or make any posts or anything like that, because if you ever end up in court, you're going to get, you know, raked over the coals. She's going to take you for all you're worth. Within a year, M realized she progressed much in her career at this particular company and left for another job. I wonder why. <laughs> after she had the audacity to get pregnant and make all of us do a little bit more it meant more work for everybody minor delays etc etc um she she decided finally to leave um fast forward a little while i was talking with the hr guy from the company emma joined and he asked me about her this seems like a i don't know if this is like a violation of privacy rights or something emma joined he asked me about her i told him the truth both that she was a good worker and is dedicated, but that she is not honest or trustworthy. What? Because she got pregnant? Because she's not honest <laughs> or trustworthy. Oh, my God. Sorry, sorry. I, I, I need to scroll down a little bit here. That's crazy, man. Now, this basically meant that M gets a similar treatment at the new company. She is considered a good employee or team player, but no one wants to select her for any critical projects. Why, you're just like a piece of shit then, huh? It's not enough that you did it to her for essentially no good reason when she was at your company. Now she goes to a new company because you guys treated her like garbage, and then you torpedoed her there as well. Some of my friends say that telling HR about the incident makes an ass with two dollars. <laughs> it has gotten me to feel a bit guilty. Oh, oh, well, we wouldn't want that to happen. The OP feels a little guilty for terrorizing a woman for two different uh, employees or two different employers just because of the fact that they, they said something that might be illegal. I wasn't sure what the right move should be. P.S. Feel free to ask for more information if you need it. I've already uh, said the quiet part loud and uh, in court will lose my entire life savings. Um, I might as well just keep going. Uh, I just want to be clear. M knew she was pregnant. Did I mention that part? Like she was exercising her human rights, uh, you know, and then uh, acting appropriately given the labor laws of the uh, country she lives in. Uh, she wanted to be in the project, so she didn't disclose that she was pregnant. Her team, you're thinking a lot about this lady. You're not, you're not thinking at all about her team. They had to pick up the slack on this one, man. The company had no choice. There was absolutely nothing. Well, the CEO probably could have taken a, a 0.05% cut to their salary to hire another equally abled person to do that. But no, they, there's nothing that could have been done. She torpedoed this multi-million dollar serious project by just getting pregnant and not telling us. 
Her team. It's not about me. It's her team had to stretch themselves thin to make it up. Our company has a general, oh, as a general rule, as a general rule, we have no issues with women taking time off for pregnancy. In specific situations, we may have some issues with, as a general rule, we're all for it. We love it. Happy families make happy workers. But in this one unique situation, uh, we're going to treat you, I believe their words were, um, it pissed off the top management. Uh, she was, she could, can't be trusted in the future. She became a pariah. No team lead wanted her in any critical projects. Uh, I told uh, the other HR rep that she's a good worker, but she's not honest or trustworthy. Um, but in general, we don't have issues. Legally speaking, if a lawyer's asking us, as a general rule, we don't have issues. In specific situations, we might break the law in order to just ruin someone else's uh, professional life just to be petty. But as a rule, we're all for it. Even beyond the policy mandated time, the most I've come across is a woman getting 15 months off. She came back to work and faced no repercussions. At first, I thought you were you were an asshole, and I'm happy to admit that I was so wrong, because now you've you've pointed out that a woman has taken advantage of all of the uh, maternity leave that she's entitled to, and she didn't even face any repercussions. I thought for sure you would bring her back, and then maybe after that, you know, you would maybe treat her as a pariah or uh, gossip about how she's untrustworthy to every other employer within her industry, but she didn't even face any repercussions. And you're going to say that they're the asshole? I should have mentioned this before, but the HR guy was formally asking me about M. It wasn't like I was talking about her at the pub. I don't work in HR, but this actually, like, almost feels worse to me. Like, I think if you were intoxicated at the pub, I would be like, you know, maybe loose lips sink ships or whatever. But wait, can, can you formally ask a, about an employee? I guess if they phone you on your work phone, that's a formal ask. I don't know where people got the idea that she was just a month into the pregnancy when she was interviewed. Just to clarify, she was pregnant long enough that she knew she wouldn't be completing the project. Everybody's talking about her feelings. Nobody's even thinking about the feelings of the cement plant that we were building. Nobody's talked. Nobody has asked how the cement plant feels about this. Everybody's just worried about the human being. It's crazy. She didn't mention it because she wanted the project on her resume. Bro, everybody gets this. Everybody knows she didn't mention it because she wanted to be on the project. Because if she told you that, was, that she was pregnant, you clearly would not have selected her for a project that she's worthy of being on. Our company never punishes an employee for taking maternity leave. Obviously! It's the... Every, every point of defense that they offer in this post is literally, we follow the law, Okay? We followed the legal rule of the law, except for like a couple of times when I gossip. Um, but like in this one specific situation, I really think that she should have let us discriminate against her. But in this case, the team lead did not want her on their team for high profile projects after she returned because they didn't trust her to be forthright. Because if she was forthright, you wouldn't. They've hired her for the project, which would have put her further back in her career just to benefit a company that in all likelihood, especially based on this post, doesn't actually care for her well-being whatsoever. I thought it would be obvious, but our source for M's motivations were M herself. She admitted all of this herself. So does that change anything that she admitted that she knew she was pregnant when she applied for the job? And just to clarify, I didn't put out a blanket statement of her trustworthiness, even though I said she's not really honest or trustworthy. I explained the incident and explained that due to this, her co-workers consider her untrustworthy. It isn't me. 
I don't consider her untrustworthy. I just said to the other HR rep, nobody thinks she's trustworthy. There's a, it wasn't me. I didn't say I think she can't be trusted. I said nobody thinks she can be trusted. By the way, I'm, I'm losing my mind because the uh, judgment here, not the asshole 50%, you're the asshole 47%. So even though the flair is asshole, over time, the votes tallied and not the asshole ended up being in, in first. I don't even think this is like a, a super like woke opinion. Just like the, the, you have an obligation as an employee to, you know, propel yourself as far ahead as possible, especially within the bounds of like legality. And the company just won't give a shit about you at all. Like the lies or the, the laws are there to be exercised, you know? Anyway, let's, let's click on this. Okay, here we go. You're the asshole. Laws may be different where you are. But in America, what you did would be a, an illegal move. We have laws to protect workers from that kind of bullshit. You have no business whatsoever having that conversation. Your company, your rules. Yeah, this isn't the USA. I assumed the 26 weeks of maternity leave may have clued everyone else in. Um, maybe you could have told from the fact that we have a uh, great maternity leave that there are no repercussions for exercising usually, that we're in a country that actually cares about its workers' rights, except for... Um, why would it be illegal to share her performance details with her new employer? And her performance details, of course, were getting pregnant and not telling anybody. Hey, ladies, just remember, when you see that pregnancy test, when you see those two lines pop up, the first phone call you got to make is to your boss, okay? It is not nice to not let your boss know first. Then, father of the child... Maybe your parents, if they've, if they've done their essay recently. 100%, you're the asshole. She didn't have to tell you she was pregnant when interviewing for a project. What you did was ethically wrong. As someone in HR, you should have known better than to do that. Yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> if you're in the U.S., she could sue you. Yes. I do have to check, like, let's look at an opinion that we don't necessarily agree with, okay? She didn't have to say she was pregnant. The only obligation she had was not committing to a responsibility she knew she shouldn't be able, she wouldn't be able to fulfill. She chose to make that commitment in the full knowledge and intent of not fulfilling it. Corporate lawyers spotted. The reason for which she wasn't available is irrelevant. She said she would do something she had no intention of doing. The word for that is lying. And as a direct result of her lie, several colleagues, including the other mothers on the project... Is there a, is there a, 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 won't somebody think of the mother's fallacy? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that the other mothers can be asked for their opinion uh, if they exist in this situation. Why don't we ask the other mothers what they think about uh, what M did in this situation and see whose side they're on? That would be an interesting conversation. They might not agree with me. I just think that rather than put words in their mouth, it might be good to ask them. Um, had to put in, uh, they had to put in additional labor. There was nothing the company could have done. Regardless of what legalities may or may not obtain morally, OP is in the clear. Re regardless of the laws that they broke morally, they're in the clear. That's important. Uh, for sharing this relevant information with her new employer. Protected category does not mean exempt from the standards of ethical behavior. No, thanks for the gold, really? Thanks for the gold kind, sir. Okay. Uh, we disagree. Let's put it that way. OP, you may go to prison, but... Go there with, with a song in your heart, knowing you did the morally right thing. Not the asshole. You mentioned in a comment she admitted to knowing she was pregnant and wouldn't be there for 80... You me actually, you mentioned in your entire comment uh, about 20 times to knowing that she was pregnant and wouldn't be there for 80% of the project, but didn't tell anyone because she wanted it on her resume. In that case, she definitely isn't a team player and admitted to it as well. Your Honor, I may have breached the privacy standards uh, that have been set out in the charter rights for citizens of this country, but have you considered... The plaintiff 
is not a team player. The plaintiff, they didn't give 110%. They didn't go into the boards to try to win hard puck battles. They didn't do the little things right. They're not a team player. Hi, I have a genuine question about this. For all the you're the asshole responses. I'm a woman and while reading this, I thought he wasn't the asshole. I don't know much about HR work, so that could be it. But could someone explain it to me? I'm aware you can't have someone miss work opportunities because they're pregnant. But she basically missed the entire project. It feels unfair to me that she would miss probably 90% of a massive project and didn't tell anyone. Can someone help me out? Also, I understand how he's the asshole for telling the HR guy a few years later. But I don't understand how he was originally. I, I am just like, and I, I, I actually like understand it. Because I think if you put yourself in the position where you're like, uh, like imagine you were doing a group project and you were like, hey, you want to be in my group? And then a week into a 16 week project, they were like, by the way, I'm going to be like going to school abroad for the next four months and I won't be able to help out that much. I think you would be annoyed a little bit. The flip side of that, though, is that, you know, when you're in the rat race, it's uh, kind of every person out for themselves. And when you're, what's the word I'm looking for here? When you're willfully not taking advantage of the labor laws that are given to you as a human being, you're giving the company the benefit of the doubt and the labor laws are there so that your company doesn't uh, exploit you because they probably you know, as a, re as a result of you doing what you might feel is the nice thing, you would probably end up holding your career back, you know, potentially permanently as a result. So I feel like you, you have a res the, the company has a responsibility to treat you to the letter of the law and you have a responsibility to yourself and, and your future self to act with, you know, within the scope of your rights as well. Yeah, not to mention, I mean, this is not even uh, worth pointing out necessarily, but, uh, you know, it's not like she took a six-month vacation. <laughs> like, you know, it's probably like a couple of weeks getting ready for the baby, uh, uh, absolutely uh, terrible 48 hours in the hospital, followed by six months of learning how to raise a, a brand new human infant, right? And then the other part of this that pisses me off is everyone's acting like they're, they, the company had no choice but to make the team, they, like now five people have to do six people's work. Why don't you just put another person on the project? I don't understand. Like there, there's so many other alternatives here. But yeah, plus they did, but they had to, hey, you forgot the part where they had to get him up to speed. Hey, you forgot the part where they had to get him up to speed, man. Anyway, I'm a woman in HR. Most people have their U.S. lens on. It's unethical to knowingly volunteer for a project you won't be available for just for the resume pop. Look, is it unethical? I don't think so. I really don't. Is it not nice? Yeah. I think it's not nice. I think it is kind of a not nice thing to do. But at the same time, I think... Well, I don't know. It, I'm very unethical. I'm trying to think about... I mean, I, I know where I stand on the issue, and you do too if you're listening to me simultaneously. But... Like, you're there to... Like, that's what the law is there for. You know, if, if you have the right to protect the information about whether or not you're pregnant or planning on getting pregnant in the future because it's considered a privacy violation because they can discriminate in hiring decisions, then by keeping that information private, I don't think that's unethical at all. That's what it's there for. Is it unethical from like a Greek philosopher standpoint? I'm like, I don't know. Who cares? <laughs> would, I guess the thing I'm thinking is, uh, would the company also uh, be ethical towards her? And based on the response of the corporate HR here, my answer is probably not. Uh, so I, I feel like, you know, I, I, I think she did what she should have done. Hold on. Let, let's close this one up. 
I'm probably going to be downvoted for this, but not the asshole. They asked for your opinion and you were honest. She was dishonest in the recruitment process and caused stress for the team. What a bitch. She, the only reason she even had that baby was to piss us off, man. So selfish. Couldn't she have just waited like three years for the project to be done and then have the baby? Although then by getting that uh, project done, she probably would have been up for some new job interviews and possibly could have started interviewing at new places for a huge increase in her salary, at which point she wouldn't want to get pregnant then either because it would be unethical to like interview for a new job knowing you have a plan to have a family in the future. So then she would like go work at a new job. She might be promoted in like a management position and then she's going to have the audacity to have a kid at that point when you know she's in charge of all these deliverables for a large like when is it oh, oh and then she's dead she died of old age okay well now it's now it's her free time she can do with it whatever she pleases not the asshole you might get beat up over that whole pregnancy is private thing but it's like anything else if you know you can't complete a project for any reason and hide it you deserve a reputation you don't deserve a reputation as someone who can be trusted People are crazy, man. I'm like... <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. You're the asshole, a huge one. Deleted. They, they must have been cyberbullied, man. No woman is required to disclose her pregnancy. And in fact, it is illegal to ask in interviews. If it was a man, you never would have done this and your company wouldn't have blacklisted her. You and your company are misogynistic, punishing a woman for having a child and then ruining her future opportunities. Get over yourself. Where's the lie? There's a million reasons she could have thought she would be able to work through her pregnancy. It's highly unusual for someone to take maternity leave during the pregnancy unless it is a high-risk pregnancy. That's true. Usually, at, at most, you know, well, the, you don't want to use much of your maternity leave in advance of the pregnancy or in advance of the, the delivery, I should say, because you really need that time afterwards to get adjusted to life with the baby. Like, you... I mean, sometimes it can happen, I guess. But again, whether, you know, you can't discriminate whether or not to put someone on a project based on whether or not their pregnancy is high risk, unless you're like the devil. Um, unless it is a high risk pregnancy. We don't know her history. We don't know her past experiences. Every single person in these comments is villainizing her without even giving her the benefit of the doubt. This wasn't some big conspiracy or strategic manipulation. She Should, should she have gotten pregnant at a more convenient time for her co-workers? I don't know where you all live and work, but you clearly deserve better labor laws. If you don't see why this is wrong, I can only imagine that you think it's normal. In many places, this would never slide. I mean, I, I agree. I, it, it sucks. Maybe I'm going to have to delete the, the VOD if I get this kind of response to it. I'll just get over it. I, I was there for the pop play. <laughs> what? No. She was already an employee. She was merely being selected for the project. In normal circumstances, we would never ask... Oh, this is OP. We would never ask or expect to be told beforehand about a pregnancy. It's normal. In, in, in general, we're very pro-pregnancy. We're... We love giving out the legally required maternity leave. As a general rule, we would never expect to be told beforehand. But again, in this one specific location or situation we're not asking you to tell us you're you're planning on getting pregnant we're just asking to for you to forego any and all opportunities if you're planning at some point and having a family but when she was offered a spot to the project team we expected her to inform us she wouldn't be available for about 80 percent of the period no woman would be punished for having a child if that was true do you honestly think we'd have such a maternity leave policy So I, look, I, there's two people I want to hear from here, okay? I want to hear from the perspective of the other mothers on the team. And then secondarily, I also want to hear from the... I want to know what the project was. Wouldn't it be great if they work at, like, Party City and it was, like, a refresh for, like, what their Halloween costumes are going to look like Halloween 2022? Would that change your opinion on this? Or if they worked at, at uh, Yum Brands Incorporated and they were trying to figure out how to tweak the recipe for the Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich? <laughs> yeah. 
Like I've been I've been operating on the assumption that this is like some kind of infrastructure construction project or something like that. How funny would it be if it was like, you know, we need to figure out what the movie poster for the new Black Panther is going to look like. We got to composite it. You can't afford to take six months off from this. This is a big deal. Anyway, this is... Uh, I. You know what? There is some arguments here. Don't get me wrong. But this is... Uh, pardon me. This is uh, This is what it's all about, man. It's, it's spice and, and spice is nice. When it comes to the the React content, at least, I mean, we were on that one for like like half an hour. I don't know. My in this situation, my my perspective, it's going to be very hard to to tilt me off of the idea that if she's operating within her legal rights, anything that she can do to uh, advance her career, if it's only at the expense of the feelings of the corporation she works for, then you know, that's what you got to do, because uh, I, I would expect that the company would leave her in the lurch as well. That's my take on that. Also, her co-workers, though, I, I think her co-workers should be of the opinion that why can't we just... I mean, they put another person on the project, right? Admittedly, I, the, the biggest project I've ever done in my life was probably like three months long. It was a little game I made in Unity for like a programming class. <laughs> So I've I've never built a nuclear reactor or you know like a big wind farm or something like that but I would like to think that if I was working on a project like that uh and then my company uh said hey we got to take someone off the team and put someone new on I'd be like why and they'd be like oh she's having a baby and I'd be like oh congrats I I don't know maybe I I I haven't been in the corporate environment long enough to when the doors close everything becomes like succession and you just, how dare she, how dare she make me for the next week respond to more emails and sign more forms or something? Like, I don't, admittedly, I don't know. And I'm only coming from the perspective of what I know. I'm not saying that's how the real world works, but that's, that's where I fell on that issue. She didn't even give the calico cut pants. I, and the other thing is, I think you got to put it on the flip side. You know, if she goes, I'm going to get pregnant. They don't put her on the project. She takes her maternity leave. If you put, if you put the, if you play the tape forward for like, you know, 10 years on that, what does it get her? Is the company under any obligation in the future to, uh, be like, hey, she, you know, did right by us in the past. So next time we get a project, we're going to give her a leg up. Like, no, it's it, that's like a handshake, wink, wink sort of deal, right? So I think she's got to take, you know, her opportunity to, you know, to get ahead when she can. And it's, she did it on merit. It's not like she was stabbing people in the back. Also, it's not even just the... Is she the asshole for not admitting to the pregnancy in the first place? Which, again, who cares? In my opinion, at least. I don't work for the company, obviously, though. Unless it was Amazon. In which case, you're stealing food out of my kid's mouth. Um, the other asshole question is, should she have been outed for this at her new company? And that one, I think, I definitely am like, you should just keep your mouth shut, dude. I, un I understand you got a chip on your shoulder, but anyway... We're moving on. Am I the asshole for selling my vacation apartment to one daughter, even though my other daughter asked for it first? Am I the asshole for being rich? No, but let's, <laughs> let's see where this goes. Okay, everyone, uh, so many people in chat were like, fuck you, fuck you, we hate you. Not to me, but to the, the poster. Hello, lovely people of Reddit. That's the first, like, one word or one sentence. I, for some context, I'm a 78-year-old woman living alone. Are you going to change your, your tune now? Seems like a, an affable lady so far. I know you, were, you thought it was John Taffer, didn't you? I bet you thought it was John Taffer. No, yes. 
I own a house that I live in and my children grew up in in a beachfront apartment. This is where our family vacationed often when the children were growing up. I have two daughters that I'll call Violet and Rose in this story. Okay, so your children are in their, you know, their middle age. Health issues have led me to be unable to maintain this apartment, so I was looking to sell. I'm, yeah, but names have been changed to protect the innocent. Uh, let's, uh, let's just call one of them Desdemona <laughs> and the other one... <laughs> It's uh, anyway. Um, so I was looking to sell. I mentioned this briefly to Violet last year during the stage where I only considered selling. And she said when I was ready, she would buy it. I said that would be lovely. And the conversation ended. When I decided to officially sell three months ago, I told Violet and Rose until my surprise. Rose also offered to buy it. She never mentioned wanting to buy this, but she had been looking at other holiday properties around the area. Neither of them were budging on their offer. So I suggested they co-buy it which was meant with a firm no from both of them for reasons I won't get into. They were never close, unfortunately. After deliberating for some time, I made the decision to offer it to uh, the open market as a result of this situation because I worried that it would create negative feelings uh, in my family if I chose uh, one of the daughters over the other one. Nope. I decided to offer it to Rose, despite the fact that Violet asked for it first, for several reasons. Rose is only a two-hour drive away and would get more use out of it. Rose was already visiting it at least once every two to three months, while Violet visits it once every one to two years. Violet lives across the country about a four-hour plane ride away with COVID lockdowns that makes it difficult for her to come. Honestly, I do have to say that seems like a pretty good reason. Rose is married with three children that love the beach while Violet is unmarried with a partner but no kids and is out of childbearing age if that matters. Not something that typically comes out uh, up in the real estate buying process, but you got her, I guess. My eldest granddaughter was already strongly considering living in it before I announced selling it because she has plans on attending college and university about 20 minutes away. This, look, would I... Would I maybe have suggested just selling it uh, on the open market to avoid uh, family drama, maybe. But these seem, like, one in three in particular seem like good reasons to give it to, to sell it to one over the other. I believe selling to Rose means the apartment will get more use and enjoyment, and Violet will still be able to visit for vacations if Rose permits and isn't using it. However, Violet is extremely upset and refuses to talk to both Rose and I. She believes I'm disadvantaging her because, hey, it's like the, 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 the flip side. Rose is what happens when you exercise your legal rights to have children in the middle of a work project and violate is what happens when you choose to be career focused. See, you st and then people start having kids. The people that have kids get concessions because they have kids and you're out here like I gave up that time in order to advance my career and I'm, I'm getting still hit over it. And they're like, yeah, but at least you behaved ethically the whole time. Um, no kids, no cottage. It's that simple. At the end of the day, it's my apartment. I believe I have the right to choose who to sell to. Violet has offered to pay more for the apartment in an attempt to sway me. Healthy family environment, for sure. Um, get, get your kids involved in a bidding war um, over your vacation home just because of the fact that uh, they don't like each other, apparently. At the end of the day, it's uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm a nearly 80-year-old woman racked with health issues. To put it bluntly, I don't have many years left in me, and I don't care about the money. So am I the asshole for choosing to sell to Rose? Dude, I'm, I am don't know what happened to me over the past couple of weeks. I'm like, I'm off my freaking rocker, man. You're the asshole, 48%, not the asshole, 39%. Well, where, where do I fall on this? IMO, not the asshole. But let, let's read the edit at least. I, I do have to say, by the way, the, am I the asshole for choosing to sell the rose, even though my other daughter asked for it first? Uh, if, you're, if your children in this dispute are like, you know, in their 50s, asking for it first is not like, that's like a schoolyard law. This is not how we settle, you know, disputes, especially over stuff that's this serious once you enter the adult world. Mom, I called shotgun. I, I licked the wall and said, my germs, and now you're going to sell it to Violet instead or Rose? I can't keep it straight. Anyway, I feel conflicted. 
So I would like some outside opinions. I appreciate all these comments. I do not favor Rose for having... Ch oh, now I, I can understand on Reddit why she ended up being the asshole. You're the asshole for discriminating against your own daughter for not having kids. Post history, r slash child free, r slash antinatalism, r slash uh, a boring dystopia, r slash late stage capitalism, etc., etc. Et um, I was nearly like Violet. I didn't get married until I was 37 by choice and didn't have children until I was 38 and 41 because I focused on my career. I thought I would never want to get married or have children. Critical hit. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, okay. Let, let's, I just want to read the comments, okay? You're the asshole. Violet asked you first. And you're... To be fair, she did say, that would be lovely. It sounded like you were supportive of her buying it. Your reasons for selling it to Rose are arbitrary and essentially assumptions on your part. I don't blame Violet for being upset with you. How you responded to the situation appears to be favoritism. Look. Oh my God, I, I refuse to read this. You, you know how to use Reddit formatting? That's, you've self-selected that I will not read your comment. I'm sorry to say, that's rude. I'm still not gonna read it, but I apologize. Um, I disagree with the judgment on this one. That being said, I do understand that she did say, Hey, mom, I'll buy the vacation home off of you. And then you said that would be lovely. Now, at the same time, that might have come up casually speaking. You know, as like, maybe I'll sell it one day. That's not an offering. That's not an invitation to like, you have the exclusive right of first refusal to, to buy something. But I could understand how the original, how Violet's feelings could be heard over this. I, I even see math in it. I, anyway, hold on. Moving on. You're the asshole. All the reasons you've stated for this are horrible. You are disadvantaging her because she chose her career instead of having a family. I, look, I, admittedly, I'm playing into OP's head cannon, But I definitely... I mean, if you have the option to sell a property within your family to somebody who's, who lives one to two hours away or somebody that lives a four-hour plane ride away and also doesn't use it too much, it seems like you make the right thing, you made the right decision by offering to not give it, but like sell it to the person who uses it more often and, and can use it more often easily in the future. Rose is getting much more use out of the apartment. The fact that she has kids who are also going helps in that favor. She lives closer, visits more often, keeps the place more up more often. The most logical choice is Rose. It's fine that Violet chose to have her career, and that's wonderful, but that's not the only issue. It would be illogical. It's not playing favor. It's, it's literally illogical. I do agree. Everyone else is focused on the wrong things, not the asshole. Have you considered the dibs, though? Have you considered the dib factor? You're the asshole. If both wanted it and neither wanted to co-own it, I would have sold it to a stranger. I do agree with that. For sure. That's, that's a good take, in my opinion. But I am also like, you know, <laughs> it does sound like, like the character known as Rose is using it much more frequently. And, uh, and as a result of that, I'm like, uh, you know, maybe it was better to not put it on the open market. It seems like Rose has a sentimental connection and is getting use out of it. With this handled, I, I suspect OP is also the reason her girls aren't close. Tell me you're a, a psycho without telling me you're, you're a psycho. I've read four sentences about uh, someone's life. Hey, you're the reason your daughters don't talk, even though they're adults in their 40s. <laughs> Please don't make such assumptions. Oh my God. They were in a fatal car crash that killed their father when they were only 13 and 15. Their relationship has never healed from these events. So knowing this, you decided to sell your apartment in this manner, which could only result in resentment, especially when you decided the one who had kids was more deserving. Oh my God. And they ratioed her. That's the worst part out of all of this. 
81 posts, you're a bad mom. 82 posts, actually, there was an indescribably bad family trauma that happened. 86 upvotes. Don't care, didn't ask, plus you're old. That's, that's insanity, man. <laughs> don't care didn't ask plus you ratio you fell off all right well um i think we got one more in us actually i think we got two more in us because the one that's two away looks really good <laughs> hold up we'll, we'll go fast i promise okay I just I, I I wonder about these people that just go into every discussion trying to win, you know? And the worst part about it is that I think that if you spend too much time online, you think that that's what all interactions are like. And as a result, you then get infected with that. And you go through life thinking that every interaction is, you know, there's a winner and a loser. And then it's just like it spreads like a, like a, a fungal colony or something. How about just like, I think you should have sold it to a third party, but I can understand your reasons for selling it to Rose. Instead, it's like, you're a bad mom. Uh, actually, they suffered something indescribably tragic that forced them uh, apart from one another. Don't care, didn't ask. Shut up. Everyone who's a bad mom, uh, give context. Bad moms, give context. Am I the asshole for nagging my sister into getting pregnant earlier? I'm 28 and my sister is 36. We've always been close and on good terms. Well, until mom sells the vacation apartment. One thing that always annoyed me. We've always been close. One thing, though, that always annoyed me is that she's the kind of person who believes in the power of energy to the point where she refuses to go to the hospital and claims she can heal any illness she has on her own. The, the roller coaster. I was like, we've always been close. She does annoy me. She believes in the power of energy and she can heal disease with the power of her mind. Okay, fair enough. I think she's lucky she's never faced serious medical issues visibly so far. She's been married for six years. They wanted to enjoy life before having kids. He says he's ready, but she refuses and he's respecting her wishes. She says she's re He says he's ready, but she refuses and he's respecting her wishes. She says she's ready now. Oh, okay. But she communicated with her spiritual guides who told her to start having children when she is 44. They said four kids, so she might be having kids well into her 50s if that's even possible. That's a, that's a prickly situation. I know that it's better for women to get pregnant before 40. We know how many people who had kids in their 40s and those kids had serious issues. Sure, okay, this is not like anecdote is not uh, data, but I understand what you're getting at. Um, I mean, even if it's biologically possible, I guess the risk of a high-risk pregnancy goes up. Every time she brings up this weird plan of hers, aptly described, I suppose, I tell her she's being reckless and isn't taking into account the serious risks. She doesn't listen to me and is stubborn in her thinking, thinking, yet she keeps bringing it up around me. Two weeks ago, I was talking with them at a family gathering, and she brought up her weird pregnancy plan. I told her she was being unrealistic and once again pointed out we don't... Okay, yes, yes, yes. She said it's because they lacked the connection she had with the spiritual realm. I replied with something along the lines of you're an idiot and then turned to her husband and said, I hope you have a good excuse ready for your kids for going along with this nonsense. She's been upset since then. It's the first time she actually got upset about my reaction. She refuses to talk to me, and I know from my brother that her and her husband are fighting about this issue even today. My brother and others in the family think I was an asshole for w the what I said, even though all of them are also against her pregnancy plan. Yeah, that's, um, look, I, I feel like this is, it, this is a classic example of you're the, you're the asshole, but also you're right. This, this happens from time to time, you know, great idea in delicate execution. I think that Sometimes this is a situation where I think it well, you, I wouldn't even say that she's being an asshole, to be honest. I would say she's being impolite and she's uh, breaching social norms for sure. But this is not like, you know, disagreeing with somebody 
uh, on something trivial and then being like, fuck you, you know, whole grain Tostitos are better than white corn Tostitos. This is a situation that potentially has like serious long-term health ramifications, right? So even though it's an asshole move, it's about a, it's about a very serious issue. And I think it comes from a place of, uh, of care about her sister and her sister's family. I, she just seems concerned to me. I say not the asshole. I'm not even, I don't need to look at the comments. I already know what they look like. This is what I wanted to see. Oh, my God. They, they just keep getting better. Am I the asshole for getting pissed at my GF for spam calling me at 3 a.m. after clubbing when I was asleep? Am I the asshole for not shutting up at 4 a.m.? Am I the asshole for telling my mother-in-law it's inappropriate to bring something up I did as a teen to embarrass me at my own shower? Am I the asshole for shutting my wife out of the blender buying process? There's a lot of good stuff there, man. I, this is our hard stop, though, okay? <laughs> I don't know. I got I to gotta read the blender one. A little context. I have a hard time sleeping. I've recently fallen into a good sleeping routine, meaning I've been falling asleep at 9 p.m. to 11 p.m., which is usually unheard of for me. Respect. I'm a borderline insomniac. When I wake up out of sleep, it's hard for me to return to sleep, and my girlfriend knows this. She also knew I would be asleep because she checks Snap Maps constantly to see when I was last on. Plus, I hadn't replied to any of her snaps in hours, which I don't usually do. Can somebody in chat tell me what the fuck this means? She checks Snap map snap maps constantly to see when i was last on plus i hadn't replied to any of her snaps in hours which i don't usually do snap chat snap maps are posts that are geotagged so it checks your location is that is that correct Not really, but yes. Okay. You can just do that? <laughs> you, have to, you have to enable it. Oh, okay. That's crazy, man. Snap, chat, snap, maps. You have to disable it. It's enabled by default? Oh my god, and you, you people are worried about the damn vaccine? You can check on your boyfriend's snap map on Snapchat and see... Oh, don't worry about him, he's asleep. <laughs> Look, he's got a little pip in his house here. That's crazy, man. Um, anyway. Edit. Oh, okay. We, we weren't even at... Oh, the edit comes in the middle. It's an edit in media res. By spam call, I mean she had rang me two times prior I hadn't woken up for. The third call woke me up. She spam calls me at 3 a.m. walking home alone from the club when she feels unsafe. Okay, you're the asshole. Kind of. Let, let's go further, but like the word unsafe definitely... Uh, <laughs> it does a lot of heavy lifting there. Furthermore, she also... Okay, well, she feels unsafe and wants to talk to me on the way back despite knowing about my sleep issues. Okay. Like, would I be annoyed? Yes, for sure. And I don't think the boyfriend did, as so far has done anything wrong at all. Like, I don't think he's, he, like, he goes to sleep, she's at the club, who cares, right? I would be annoyed, but if she's like, I don't feel safe, please talk to me right now. You gotta, you gotta do the conversation or break up with her. <laughs> Those are your two options. Furthermore, she also knew I had to be up early to get a train home from my university that she didn't take any notice of. She asked if I'm angry with her. I reply yes, because she's walking home alone when she had the option to go home with a friend, which would have been safer. She didn't want to stay an extra hour, so she left early on her own. And because I'm awake, it's going to take me a very long time to get to sleep again. I said it was selfish of her, and she had little concern for me. I also find the lack of care for her safety a big issue, because it's a 30-40 minute walk home in complete darkness. That's all very fair. I gotta say, he pulled me back a little bit. He, he he's not he, he's not on the moral high ground for being super pissed about being woken up but being like hey if you had planned properly you could have just taken a cab home or something 
you, like you put yourself in this situation and it's inconsiderate of you. That makes sense to me. Yeah, I can see that. By the way, great time to have this discussion is at like three in the morning when one party is sober and the other party is probably intoxicated. But anyway, uh, we get into an argument on the phone as she's walking back and she's accusing me of not caring enough for her and says that I'm in the wrong for being mad. If it was an actual emergency or something bad was happening, I wouldn't have minded. This, I think you don't really know until that happens, though. Like, so if she had phoned and been like, I'm actively being killed right now, could you help me? He would be like, oh, gladly. No problem. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't have minded, but it's more the fact she knowingly took an extremely risky walk home when she could have gotten home a safer way but chose not to. It took me around two hours to sleep afterwards, so I was even more upset after the phone call had ended. I, I mean, I could, I'm going to be honest, came into this thinking, could be the asshole, definitely uh, left this feeling like he's not the asshole, in my opinion, be, not because he was justified in getting angry at being called and woken up, but in my opinion, justified because she didn't plan for a situation in which she wouldn't have to call him. That's my take on the subject. I know it seems it seems subtle. But instead of being like, you know, don't call me unless you're being killed, which is kind of the way it, it it's phrased, I think it's more like, hey, is very inconsiderate of you to... Well, I don't know. Because now I'm like... I don't want to go so far as to say she put herself in a position where she would need to call him because that's a little bit fucked up to begin with. But at the same time, I am like... If, if she had planned better, she could have just gotten home in a more safe manner than walking home through the darkness for three quarters of an hour. Um, I mean, I would be annoyed. I guess that's why I'm, I'm putting myself on the mindset that, that I would be annoyed too. Sleeping issues uh, notwithstanding. I, I don't even see it as an everybody sucks here. Like, I'm, I'm, not, even, I'm not even willing to, to say that he's... Like, why would he suck in this situation? I guess that from her perspective, it would suck to be like, hey, I'm scared, and he was like... You didn't plan effectively to not be scared. Click, right? Like, that. if you're in her mindset, you, you would be like, you know, well, I guess you don't care about me. How, I don't know if he hung up. <laughs> but still, but I'm also like, you know, could you have plan to take a taxi or something yeah also why is if you're going to bed at 9 p.m your girlfriend's going out clubbing at 3 a.m look if it happens now and then different opposites attract etc cetera, etc cetera. but like that seems like a bad fit just from the outside looking in i'm not saying break up because i don't know anything more about the situation but it definitely seems like i you know you're gonna end up in situations like this He had an early appointment? No, I'm taking his side. I think going to bed at 9 p.m. is, is highly based. <laughs> Although they do seem uh, to be young based on all this nomenclature I've never heard of, like Snap Maps, Snapchats. Snap Maps, Snapchat. Okay, I mean, I got an... Uh, dude, I'm, I'm going down to the blender. I... I know I shouldn't be doing this forever, but, I mean, apparently I am. I'll just be better at the crosswords. Am I the asshole for not shutting up at 4 a.m.? In real time? I'm 27F on my way to meet up with my family on a trip. Since I was in a wedding, I couldn't drive up with them and decided to take a series of buses to catch up with them. I started at 10 p.m. and would arrive at 8 a.m. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't understand this. This this is happening live right now. It's being updated every <laughs> every 10 minutes. After getting off the first bus, we were dropped at a gas station with a small waiting room designated for the bus company. When we arrived, there was a lady and her dog sleeping, and it sprawled out so no one else could get in. Consequently, the rest of us 
Waited outside at 2.30 a.m. for 40 minutes for the next bus to come. When it arrives, the lady gets on the bus and says she missed the last one's been waiting 15 hours for this new one. She and her dog head to the back. At the next transfer, we get by on a smaller bus and my seatmate starts talking to me. I love practicing Spanish, so while we were in the rest area, we were chatting. As soon as we start driving, dog lady comes up and says, I know you guys were excited to talk to each other, but it's four in the morning. I'm trying to get some sleep. I've been waiting for this bus all day and I'm tired. You need to stop talking. We honestly were not talking loudly, but I guess she needs absolute silence. I politely said that we would need we would be as quiet as possible, but this was public transportation. There's no rule. Every passenger had to be silent. She threw a fit and talked to the bus driver. Am I the asshole for not going completely silent? I think I might be because this is a time when people generally sleep. It's the easiest everybody sucks here of all time. Well, actually, no. You're the asshole. <laughs> Yeah, like it is, I feel like they did some sneaky rhetorical stuff, right? Like, you, you and you, I think maybe not everybody agrees with me, but I feel like it's good to be able to learn how to spot this. Like, you, he, she, I should say, they, they did identify up here. Um, she left a sentence in here that primed us. There's a small waiting room. When we arrived, there was a lady and her dog sleeping in it, sprawled out so no one else could get in. Consequently, the rest of us waited outside at 2.30 a.m. This is contextual. It does provide some preamble, but it also makes us predisposed to uh, not... Like, she's already the villain in our story just as a result of this. So we can't possibly, if we read this, you know, the first time through, we can't possibly have a fair assessment of uh, her character once the actual buildup starts happening here. So, th yeah, it's poisoning the well. It's, a, it's an inconsiderate move to be sleeping at the front of the door. It does also sound like she was fucking tired, man. She said she'd been waiting uh, 15 hours for the next bus. Now, that, ignoring this, I'm j should you be able to practice your Spanish on a bus at 4 a.m.? No. You should be, like, in prison for, like, a day. There's, there's rules of decorum. Maybe unspoken, unwritten rules. It's the same thing. If you're on an airplane... When the, if, if you're flying like, you know, across the international dateline or you're flying, uh, you know, across the prime meridian or something, when they turn the lights off, you shut the fuck up. You can whisper a little bit, you know, and people have got headphones on and stuff like that. But even though it's a, it's a public place, there's like rules of decorum for how you have to interact with your around, when you're around other people, you know? I, I think that this happened to me one time. I, I stayed at a hostel like 10 years ago. And uh, one guy, when he woke up in the... You know, you're sleeping like six or eight people to a room just in bunk beds. And he, he woke up at like 7 a.m. and just started watching like soccer clips on YouTube with the computer speakers on. And you're just like, what are you... Well, it's, uh, hey, if you're sharing a room with other people, of course you're going to have to deal with noise, right? Hey, why don't you just have noise-canceling headphones or something like that? Or, you know, it, it, there's like, it's a situation. I mean, is it public? Everyone's like, it's public transportation. It might be. I don't know. Even if it is public transportation, if, if there's like 24-hour bus service and you're on a bus at like 5 a.m. and you're having a conversation at a normal volume... You're kind of the asshole, I think. I I hate to say it, but the you know I've been a night owl in my life, and and even when I was, I still had this opinion. But you know, but between the hours of like ten p.m. and you know seven a.m., you just kind of chill. That's when the earth is as quiet as possible in order to make sure that everybody else around you can also do what they need to do. That's my take on it, at least. I think you would... It's the same shit. Okay, well, oh, what if there's a baby crying on the, on the airplane? Or there's a baby crying on the bus? I'm trying to sleep. Okay, whatever. Get some headphones. Fuck you. 
It's a public plane. You're on a public plane right now. There's, there's, there's 300 people around you and you expected uh, enough silence for you to sleep? That seems like you're the asshole. No, they should make a, a plane for babies only. Only, only a, an airline for babies. Anyway, I just wanted an excuse to tell the hostel story. Anyway, I don't think everybody sucks. Well, I don't know. She does kind of suck for falling asleep next to the door. <laughs> I, that's kind of a dickhead move. Um, but also, I feel like carrying on a conversation 4 a.m. on a bus is... You know, may, maybe I'm, I have too much of a... It's, it sounds selfish, but it's actually like the opposite, you know? Because you, they're probably thinking, oh, it's the lady's interest in her not being able to sleep versus our interest in having a conversation. But if you're annoying one person, you're probably annoying, like, most people. <laughs> it's just that one person had the, the cojones to actually, like, confront you and say something, whereas everybody else was like, I'll just be mad about it. But I think that... Uh, you know, it's your your desire to have a conversation in, in what I would look, and it's different depending on the time of day. If it's you know two p.m. and people work different shifts, but this is just it's the the unwritten rules of society as I see it. If it's two p.m. and you know you're on a public bus and you're trying to get some sleep, and uh, well, it doesn't even seem like a public bus either. It seems like a Greyhound situation, which kind of changes things. Anyway, if it's 2 p.m. and you're like, hey, can you shut up? I'm trying to sleep. You just give her the middle finger and say, you know, it's a free country. If it's 4 a.m., you know, your desire to practice your Spanish is very secondary to the people around you having a peaceful environment. That's my two cents. Night planes are for sleeping. Night buses are for sleeping. You may disagree with me on this. Just download Duolingo. What, you don't have a phone, but you expect her to get noise-canceling headphones? Okay, we got to go to the blender. Everybody sucks here on a, on a blender situation. You guys don't have phones? Well, you can practice uh, Spanish at 4 a.m. in your own... Uh, in your own house, because when it's your own house, it's your own rules. So I can wake up somebody for snoring on a bus if I'm trying to sleep. Look, okay, I know I get it. You're a redditor. Um, there's also there's a spectrum you have to consider of things that are optional and things that are not op optional. Okay, things that you have like some control over, things that you don't have control over. If somebody's sleeping, they don't have as much control over the fact that you're snoring. You might choose to just, you know, eat shit on that one and still try to fall asleep even though they're snoring. If somebody's wide awake and banging a bunch of crash cymbals together, they're both disturbing. But one of them is substantially more ruder and, and much more ignorant. It's the same reason, like, when a, uh, when a baby cries, you can be annoyed, but you're also like, it's a baby. And when, uh, like, a 35-year-old dude starts just shouting about politics on the flight, you're like, I wish that guy would shut the fuck up because we've got the same uh, intellectual capabilities and he's being a real piece of garbage right now. What song is that? I've had it stuck in my head for a while. I think it's one of the... It's from Final Fantasy. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's the Juno theme. The Junon theme? Yeah, see? I don't know why it just popped into my head so well. I, I had to think of a march. And I was like, yeah, yeah, Final Fantasy VII, Junon march. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. I was hoping for some input from this community that I've seen on all a few times. I'm a 39-year-old man, and my wife is a 33-year-old woman. Chad, that's not... I know what you're going to say. I, 55-year-old man, and my wife, 19 female. That's not that crazy, okay? Unless they say they've been married for 15 years. She stays at home and takes care of the house. No children yet. Well, I work. We're going on seven years of marriage. Last week, I received a large performance bonus. 
and I decided I would like to buy myself a nice blender with a small portion of the money. I know it's not the most exciting present to buy yourself, but I cook with a lot of purees and have a shake every morning. I've had two blenders die on me in the past three years and was determined to make my life easier. Seeing as it was a financial decision, I told my wife as much, and she told me to show her before I ordered it. It's a very Tim Robinson type, type bit here, huh? I know it's not the most exciting present to buy yourself, but I cook with a lot of purees. Okay, sorry. I researched a bunch of different models. Shopped around, checked out safety. <laughs> checked out safety ratings? Is that a common um You don't you don't hear that much about blender accidents these days? I don't know if that happens uh that doesn't mean that they don't happen, I guess, just because you don't... Maybe they happen so much they don't even report them in the news because people are just like, ah, another blender accident. What else is new? Water's wet. I found the one I wanted for just under $600. I called my wife to my computer where I showed her the model that I wanted and was mainly just confirming she was fine with it. She immediately responded by pointing at the suggested items list on the website, which showed a significantly cheaper model. She asked what I thought of that one, and I said it wasn't what I was looking for. I mean, that's a pricey blender, don't get me wrong. But you got a large performance bonus. And hey, hey, the man, he has a, a, a shake every morning. And he cooks a lot with purees. I mean, this seems like a guy, he, if, he has, if he literally has a shake every morning and cooks with purees, we're talking about it. He's using it maybe 400, 500 times a year. That seems like, you know, by the gold standard in that case. I've used a blender like less than 10 times, I think, in my whole life. Uh, then she said I should get a nice hand mixer to save some money. I kind of chuckled and said that I didn't really want one of those. She replied with, well, how about this blender? It's $500 cheaper than the one you close. I mean, the hand mixer's a joke. Like, does she even know? Sounds like she's dabbling in an avenue that she doesn't, she doesn't have GPS coordinates to. You want this guy to make a, a shake with ice cubes in a hand mixer? Are you crazy? Clearly, she doesn't work at Bon Appetit. I reiterated I was really looking for a good one that I could use for over a decade. But she was undeterred. She essentially took over my computer, then began the race to the bottom of finding the cheapest possible blender as I stood by repeating the same point about being in the market for a quality product. At one point, she went on Alibaba showing me an $11 product that would probably take a month to ship. Okay, come on. Lady, that's just... you. He, he came up with a $600 blender. You're over here on Wish.com trying to get the cheapest, the, the bargain. I was at my limit. So I finally just said, I'd think about it. She left the room and I ordered the $600 blender based. I figured when the blender got to our house, I'd explain. You know what he should have done is just been like, oh, I found this on Alibaba for $10. Yeah, you wouldn't believe it. I just did a little bit more digging. And then, look, I found the exact same one on Alibaba for one sixtieth of the price. Two days later, it arrived. She asked me how much it cost, and I said it was the one I'd shown her. She began sulking and said I didn't care about her opinion, to which I responded I told her I'd think about it. Then she asked when I ordered it. I responded about three minutes after she left the room. yada da 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 <laughs> It's the motherfucking D-O-double-G. She left the... Oh, okay. I thought about it in those minutes and made the decision I'd put half a dozen hours of research into. This is like how my dad buys stuff. He will, he'll research like four dining room chairs for like eight months. Just it, when, I, when I go like to my parents' house, if I'm there for a week, every, every day my dad will be on like uh, overstock.com, furniturereviews.ca, like... He, he, every single purchase that he makes, he, he percolates on it for like at least six months. She's furious with me and keeps repeating that I has no, it's got to be that she has no financial power in the house, right? She's furious with me now and keeps repeating that I has no financial, I can has no financial power in the house. Ooh. <laughs> 
I think she's being completely dramatic, but she thinks I'm way out of line. Any input on who's right about this would be great. Okay, two things. They, I, not the asshole 58%, everybody sucks here 20%. Okay, I, I gotta work on this screen region. I, I agree, not the asshole. I definitely don't think it's everybody sucks here. Because the guy is not an asshole. But I will also... I, I think this is a no asshole. Can, what's the percentage on that? 2%. That being said, now I'm like... Nah, she's kind of being an asshole. But I, she's kind of being an asshole, but I, I understand where she's coming from. She works from home. Doesn't make the money. Maybe she she's looking for some kind of way to exercise a little bit of control over the you know financial spending of the household right she she doesn't have the based on what is written here it seems like she doesn't have the means to uh you know do it herself so she, maybe she just wanted to be like hey i'm gonna you know be part of the blender process that's dude that's a genius idea malicious compliance he should have bought the $600 blender and the $11 blender because that's my phone falling out of my pocket again it would have only cost 11 extra dollars which is not that much when you're already spending 600 and then he could be like look at this I got the, the I got the blender you wanted me to get oh man genius yeah and then he could have put the 11 dollar blender into the 600 dollar blender turned it on watched it get vaporized and then said that's why you don't buy an 11 dollar blender but yeah i don't think i mean this is just a minor little conflict man this is not that big of a it's not that big of a deal let's go see what kind of what the most insane people on the internet think about it i i i personally am predicting uh, that there will be some kind of a comment from someone that's about 16 years old that will be like, if she's like this about a blender, imagine what she's going to be like when you have children. Do you really want that in your future? Someone who doesn't respect you at all? Everybody sucks here. Hope you realize the fight's mu much bigger than just about the blender. She feels like she doesn't have any power. I suggest you find a good marriage counselor and do not have kids until you figure out if you can resolve this. Okay. Look, that's not quite the exact comment I said, but if you've ever had a spat with your spouse over something as small as a blender, do not have kids. I think it's a little uh, reductive. Re a little bit of a red flag that you guys disagree on something. Everybody sucks here, regardless of whether 600 bucks is too much to spend. You shouldn't have told her you'd think about it when you'd already thought about it. Hey, it's just being polite. You lied to her when you said, I'll think about it, when you were not intending to think about it, you asshole. He's just being polite. I just, two questions. Does your wife manage the finance? Two, does she have access to all the bank accounts or is she on some kind of allowance system? Hey, before I weigh in on this blender argument, um, do you give your wife an allowance? What I'm trying to get at is what kind of underlying tensions or resentments there may be around money. She made a significant statement about feeling powerless, which you dismissed casually without a second thought. Okay, I do think that's kind of fair. Oh, man. People are not being that rude. Not the asshole. Sounds like you bought a Vitamix. That's what people in chat were saying. They were like, <laughs> he could be the asshole unless it's a Vitamix. Because those things are like, those things will last forever. Given your stupid wife pointed out that you'd get a hand mixer, it's quite clear she has no clue about your blender needs. That is pretty funny. Also true, though. I mean, come on. A hand mixer? Are you stupid? To be fair, she didn't care about your opinion either. And disagreeing about an opinion is not considered not caring. It's called having your own opinion. Not the asshole. It's your money. 
Not the asshole. Big financial decisions should be joint. Sure. However, you said earlier is a small performance of your perform a small portion of your performance budget. Personally, I think if you're working hard at your job and get money as a reward, you should be justified in taking some of that money to treat yourself as you see fit, as long as other expenses are covered, which I assume they are. It's great you asked her opinion. She didn't really okay. I mean, that's all very reasonable. Get to the insanity, please. Please. I'm I'm begging you. Get to the unreasonability. I love these info requests. They seem so demanding. Info. Is she a housewife due to it being something you both wanted out of marriage? Something she primarily wanted? Something you primarily wanted? Or a force of circumstance? Fact. Which bear is best? Info. Does she ever get to spend $600 on a personal item like this? Info. Does she feel free to spend a bunch of money like this? Or do you pressure her to think of saving money when she wants to make big purchases? Okay. I mean, this was not as spicy as I thought it would. Especially if he's getting the Vitamix. <laughs> wow! 59 upvotes. I'm just here to say... I'm just here to know what the actual F someone does all day. Looking after the house. Get a job. Add to the finances. And then you get a say in how they're spent. All right, look. Info, how big is your house? Info, do you have a pool? Info, info, is this really relevant to the situation at hand? I will say, I mean, if we're using this as like a bit of a teachable moment, like there was definitely, as like a, you know, 15 year old kid, if there was a situation where like the father went to work and the mom stayed at home taking care of the house and also the kids, I definitely had a bias where I was like, oh, she's got it easier. I'm not saying that's what I think now. I'm saying that's what I thought when I was a, a teenager. Now that I have a child and have worked in some more traditional environments, obviously this is an atypical gig right here, um, I kind of feel like the dad, in a lot of situations, gets off easy. You know? When you go to work for... It depends on the job, but you know, working in an office, you, you know, if you're there for eight hours, some days you do like an hour and a half of work. And you're just kind of chilling. And also, looking after the kids is exhausting. You know, like, we have one baby daughter. And sometimes my wife and I will be like, you know, hey, can you look after her for 10 minutes? I need a break. And then what we do with the break is we, like, vacuum. <laughs> it's not like, oh, I need a break so I can, like, go outside and get some leisure time. It's literally just, like... Please just give me like a psychological like tolerance break to return to normalcy for a bit and then come back with a fresh mind. No, I get that they don't have kids yet. And I, I do then look at it and I'm like, you know, I'm not going to say she doesn't do anything with her time. I'm, I'm basing it all on the Marge Simpson episode of uh, The Simpsons where she starts drinking a glass of wine a day as a habit because she's bored with the house that looks after itself. I know the doctors say you should drink a glass and a half, but I just can't drink that much. But anyway, that's not that relevant to the blender situation, man. You think he's really going to be like, oh, I'm going to buy whatever blender I want because you just watch The View all day. That's not a healthy situation, man. I am a stay-at-home wife so I can answer. I deal with everything around the house and repair appointments. I also mow. It means I deal with dog vet appointments. His one consistent chore is laundry. He wears a uniform and I refuse to deal with it because of reasons that I won't list here. I'm not taking a side. It does seem like another thing you might do during the day is post a four paragraph reply on Reddit. But it isn't a 40 hour a job week, but it's still a job that needs to get done. That's true. That is true. Also, our dogs are older and one has an immune issue. Okay, sure. We have joint finances and go over our budget together. You guys should try to stay within your budget together. I thought that was the point. I'm this is punching down. Get hey, get out of here. It's dude, it's the honey trap for me. It's it's I, I'm I'm getting too snippy. There's no need for that. There's no need for that. Okay. Anyway, let, let's do some crosswords. This was good. This was good reacts, Gord. 
It was a Vitamix. Okay. 